Hello, and welcome to Alpha Laval Energy Division's second launch event of 2022, innovation that accelerates sustainable solutions. We're broadcasting to you from our headquarters here in Lund, Sweden, where we'll be discussing how Alpha Laval plans to combat some of the biggest climate challenges for our customers today. Joining me now is the president of the Energy Division, Thomas Möller, to tell you more about our sustainability strategy and how we plan to help our customers on the road to net zero. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Lily. Uh, and getting to the net zero by 2050 is, is really the biggest challenge we have ever been facing. Uh, and failure is not really an option here. Uh, if we look at uh, how much energy we are be, uh, producing uh, that goes to waste, it's never really actually being used for the purpose it was uh, produced. Uh, we produce a lot of energy from fossil fuel still, uh, and we produce and uh, use and throw away things in a way that is, uh, is not sustainable at all. So we have to rethink how we do things and then in Alphavel we group these as energy efficiency, clean energy and circularity. And if I just take the energy efficiency as one example, uh, and if I look at how many heat exchangers we have sold in the last 12 months, it's millions of heat exchangers. Uh, and if I combine that with also the services uh, into these heat exchangers to keep them fit for, for duty, we talk actually about energy savings of 100 gigawatts. Uh, and to put that into some perspective, 100 gigawatt is more than the uh, wind turbines being installed in 2021 that, that they actually can produce. So it has a massive uh, impact. So we need to install some more alpha -well heat exchangers. Um, and we are putting a lot of all our innovation efforts, all our investments and so on are going into these three areas. So we have a lot of things uh, happening. And today there will be eight examples. Uh, within these three areas and I hope you will all get inspired and see how that can be contribute to your journey to net zero. Thank you. With that said, if you have any questions over the next 45 minutes, please don't hesitate to get in contact via the question feature and our experts will get back to you as soon as possible. And with that, let's dive into our first segment on energy efficiency. With me now is Frederick Ekström and Julian Genetier to talk to you a bit more about the data center industry. Hi both and thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. So Frederick, just to start off, could you tell us a little bit about how the data center industry is changing with growing digitalization? Sure. One of the biggest changes that we see is, of course, the growth of the industry. So we have an unprecedented demand for data centers today. In fact, what we're doing today is going to double up many times over the, the next period of time. And that's to be able to satiate our demand of artificial intelligence, storage, cloud computing, black blockchain architectures, and so on, and streaming nonetheless, as we're doing today. Um, so we see that by 2030, the data centers will consume 20% of all the energy produced. And of those 20%, 40% goes just to cool the technology. And that technology is getting more sophisticated and the chips are becoming denser, which means even more heat that we need to get rid of. And that simply becomes an unsurmountable uh, problem for current solutions. So what can we do about it? Well, there's lots of things we can do, and liquid cooling is certainly one of them. Uh, we will hear later on that there's several versions of liquid cooling, but liquid cooling can save as much as 60% of the energy required to cool something. And it can do so by reducing the amount of water that we use as well. Another benefit is that as we move into immersion cooling, or chips that are born, so-called born in liquid, then we're looking at even further reductions of footprint, water, and energy. Fantastic. Let's take a look in more detail. We have been leading in heat transfer technologies for more than 80 years. Now we are putting our expertise to help the data center industry overcome their sustainability challenges. Our solutions enable energy efficient cooling and heat reuse for data centers of all sizes all over the globe. 
Up until now, we have been active outside the server room, providing expert cooling solutions. This ranges from gasketed plate heat exchangers connected to cooling towers and seawater cooling, to braced and fusion bonded plate heat exchangers for chillers and free cooling. Today, we have moved inside the white space to provide a complete solution for all of our data center customers. We are now providing heat transfer for liquid cooling solutions, heat reuse, and a new solution for modular data centers that supports edge computing. When it comes to liquid cooling inside data centers, there are a few ways it can be utilized. First, we have direct to chip, where the hot components are cooled down by cold plates. Then we have one phase immersion cooling, where the server is completely immersed in a bath of dielectric fluids that absorbs the heat of the electronics. For two phase immersion cooling, we use an evaporating fluid for an even more efficient heat removal. For this application, we can provide a plate heat exchanger from the small chassis size to the medium or large cooling distribution unit. So, whether your application is inside or outside the server room, we have the plate heat exchanger for you. Our portfolio has the widest range of sizes in the market and can be customized to fit all your liquid cooling demands. What's more exciting, thanks to liquid cooling, we can capture the heat from the servers at even higher temperatures than before, opening the door to many more areas of use. It's a common misconception that heat can only be reused for large district heating installations. It can also be used for heating greenhouses, swimming pools, fish and lobster farms, biomass drying, and with temperatures moving up towards 65 degrees Celsius, we are coming closer to a point where we could start producing electricity. But for efficient heat reuse, you need efficient heat transfer. And that's where we come in with our products and expertise. We can help even the smallest modular data centers to become more efficient. Here is our colleague, Brandy Moore, to fill you in. We have an exciting new product to help smaller edge and container-based data centers. These modular data centers contain liquid-cooled servers where the heat is either reused using heat exchanger technology or rejected using air coolers. These modular data centers are often in remote locations where the environments can be quite harsh, and this can make maintaining temperatures a real challenge. Alpha Laval's containerized air coolers are perfect for this because of their reliability and their efficiency in all environments, helping our customers stay up and running for longer. Data centers are an integral part of digitalization, and they are increasing in number and size. And if we look at each data center as a heat plant, we are sitting on a gold mine of energy. We just need to capture it. So Julian, what is it about this new range of products that helps make Alpha Laval set apart as a supplier? Well, Lily, I think that there are three things that set us apart. The first one is our technology. Mm -hmm. We have a full spectrum of highly efficient heat transfer technology that can help to maximize the performance of the data center with minimum primary energy use and maximum heat reuse. The second thing is the competence of our team that we have seen. They have developed a true solution-oriented approach, developed the best solution for our customers for the installation and the maintenance of their equipment throughout the lifetime. And the third thing I would like to mention is our belief in partnership. We have been the first company to join ABB uh, in forming the energy efficiency movement um, in order to foster uh, energy efficiency action and drive attention on the importance of energy efficiency. So technology, the competence of the team and partnership is what set us apart. That's fantastic. Speaking of strong connectivity, up next we have a short film about our new image recognition app using Microsoft AI.
Joining me now is Sara Widerstad. Hi, Sara. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about how connected services help open up opportunities for both carbon and maintenance reductions? Sure. We know from our calculations that there is an opportunity to save as much as 50 gigawatt of energy just by making sure that already installed heat exchangers are maintained and optimized according to the running conditions. And as you saw in the video, our teams have developed this app together with Microsoft. It's a free and simple solution and we will launch it soon and it's for thermal image recognition. Uh, later this fall, you can also expect a connectivity solution for heat exchangers that will enable us to take the next step in performance monitoring and optimization. How exciting! We'll have to yes. look out for that. <laughs> next up, we have a short video about our new range of hybrid air coolers that help work with nature for more sustainable results. Hi, my name is Jan Kirkus. I'm the general manager for Alpha Laval Niagara. Hi, I'm Chris Pollock and I'm the sales manager for Alpha Laval Niagara. As the world's climate becomes less and less predictable, it's more important than ever that we work on nature's terms when cooling production processes. Here at Alpha Laval, we've been improving our air cooling systems to do just that. First off, we've been looking into how our customers can cope with fluctuating seasonal temperatures. With traditional air cooling technologies, customers will use both dry and evaporative cooling. This increases footprint, reduces efficiency, and can use up our valuable water and energy resources. Here at Alpha Laval, we have found a solution with Hayek hybrid air coolers. This new range is designed specifically to work with nature. It combines both wet and dry cooling to match the ambient temperature of your plant. This reduces water and energy usage, all while maintaining the proper process temperature. And because you can adjust the cooler as the temperature changes outside, you never have to compromise production efficiency no matter what time of year it is. Our production is based in the United States, in Buffalo, where our expert is waiting to tell you more. Welcome to Buffalo, where we produce two types of Hayek hybrid air coolers, the single zone and the dual zone. The single zone unit is a one zone cooler that can switch between wet and dry cooling. This makes it easier to reach the right outlet temperature where you have high fluctuations in ambient conditions. Typically, dry cooling mode is activated in cooler periods. This saves space and water while our single zone reaches the right outlet temperature. Our dual zone has two different cooling zones. The first is a traditional air-cooled heat exchanger. The second, an evaporative cooler, which adds to your overall cooling capacity. This design works best with hotter process inlet temperatures. It helps save water and energy while also providing plume abatement in the evaporative zone. So whatever application you run, we have the Hayek Hybrid Air Cooler for you. Here at Alpha Laval, we are constantly developing new solutions to optimize our customer processes on nature's terms. Because we understand that our customers share our drive to create a cleaner future. Contact our team today to find out how Hayek hybrid air coolers can help clean up your process without compromising on output. Joining me now all the way from the US is Brandy Moore. Hi Brandy and thank you for joining us today. Hi Willie, thank you so much. First off, why air cooling? Well, very often we're dealing with low grade or low temperature heat where heat recovery just really isn't an option. And so in these cases, air cooling is a great alternative to help keeping our customers' processes running efficiently. Great. So what is it about hybrid air cooling that makes it energy efficient? Our Alpha Laval Hayek air coolers use a single stream of air to cool both dry and wet. And this leads to significant energy and water savings. This innovation provides uh, low process outlet temperatures that are commonly seen with evaporative cooling, but it does so in a much more environmentally friendly way. And in fact, we can even run without any cooling water in certain ambient conditions. With the Alpha Laval Hayek, our team has found a truly unique solution and I'm very proud of them. That's amazing. So, so what is it about Alpha Laval that sets it apart from other brands? 
Well, Lily, that's really easy. Our combined solution replaces traditional solutions that require multiple separate heat exchanger technologies. And when you combine those solutions, our final uh, product lasts longer, has a smaller footprint, and it's less expensive to operate when compared to running multiple pieces of cooling equipment. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Brandy. Up next, Julian is back to tell us one of Alpha, about one of Alpha Laval's newest initiatives. Welcome back, Julian. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is that motivated this new initiative? Sure, Lily. Well, we have already insisted in this forum on the importance of energy efficiency in the race to net zero. We've also mentioned that the technology are available and ready to be used. So the question is, why aren't they implemented or why aren't they implemented faster? So what can we do about it? Well, of course, we could call for more regulation, more policies, more supportive uh, schemes or incentive. But usually those are too slow or not really fitted for the purpose of the specific installation and plant. So instead, we have decided to take energy efficiency in our own hands and started to train our own teams and people in order to identify together with our customer energy efficiency opportunities and waste heat recovery opportunities. Thank you. Let's take a look at this next clip to find out more. I think Thomas Edison had my job in mind when he said, opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. If I were to keep it real simple, I would say that there are two big challenges. The world needs more and more energy, and at the same time, we need to reach net zero emissions. And to have a fighting chance, we need to work this problem from every conceivable angle. One big part of the solution will be the switch to new technologies and clean energy sources. But it's equally important to look at what we can do with existing systems and solutions. In heat transfer, we already have the technology and solutions we need to make these changes. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just need to make it run smoother. It's about making sure that existing heat exchangers are clean and correctly configured and update those that are inefficient and outdated. And we have found that there is almost always room for improvement. It's in the details. We might change the cleaning and maintenance program or update the plate configurations. Or we might find ways to recover heat more efficiently. It's not rocket science. And it's something we've been doing for almost a century. But the results are impressive, leading to big savings, both in terms of cost and energy use. The challenge, though, is to figure out what works best for every specific use case and help to realize these savings. To help with this, we've developed a calculator where it's easy to input a system's current configuration and then get suggestions for potential tweaks and upgrades. Case by case, the energy saving will be impressive. But the real impact comes from doing this at scale. There are a lot of sub-optimized heat exchangers around the world, and our goal is to get to each and every one of them. Our first step is to educate our Alfa Laval colleagues in our new calculator so we can help to hunt for waste energy. We will also make the tool available for everyone because we believe that this can increase the understanding of one of our greatest opportunities. This is in distant futuristic tech. It's greasing the chains and changing the tires. But that's what makes it exciting because it's right there. We know that it works and we can do it today. My name is Sarah. My name is Jenny. I'm, I'm an, an energy, energy hunter. hunter. Joining me now to kickstart the next segment on clean energy is Joe Van Horn. Hi, Joe. Thank Hi. you for coming. Hi, lady. And with us via link, we have Julia Sauder. Hi, Julia, and thank you for joining all the way from the US. Hello. Thank you so much for the invitation. No problem. So just to start with, Joe, can you just tell us a little bit more about how long duration energy storage helps create a more clean future? Well, renewable sources like wind and solar 
are without any doubt the most clean energy resources we have. But today, we need to back them up with conventional power for when the wind is not blowing or the sun is not shining. Now, the beauty with long duration energy storage is that we actually can store the renewable energy and make this industry like 100% renewable going forward. Fantastic. And Julia, what is the Long Duration Energy Storage Council and what are your ambitions going forward? Sure. Thank you again. So the Long Duration Energy Storage Council is a global executive-led organization that strives to accelerate decarbonization of the energy system at lowest cost to society by driving innovation, commercialization and deployment of long duration energy storage. We provide fact-based guidance and information to governments, industry and the broader society we draw from our diverse, experience, like diverse membership that um, includes energy companies, technology providers, investors, and end users. And we're working to bring greater understanding of the critical role that long duration energy storage plays in local, regional, and global economies. So what technologies are in place to make this a reality? So there are four different types of long duration energy storage. There's mechanical, chemical, electrochemical, and thermal energy storage. And long duration energy storage can play in multiple roles across multiple hours, multiple days, and even seasons. And in doing so, providing flexibility and stability for power and net zero heat ecosystems. And there's enormous value in thermal energy storage to help reduce emissions, provide stability, and lower costs. And actually, to that point, Julia, you also yeah. would need very efficient heat exchangers mm -hmm. um, in order to, uh, to really maximize the efficiency of the storage system, but also to uh, reuse any, any of the waste heat the system is producing. And actually, to that point, we have developed the Pachinox Plus heat exchanger. Thank you both so much. Next up, we have a video to go into this new range in more detail. Right now, humanity is undertaking the greatest shift in energy sourcing since the 19th century. As we transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, there are some few challenges we must overcome. One of the key issues is the changing output from wind and solar power plants. So, to avoid shortages and price spike, we need some form of buffer storage to create a balance between supply and demand on the energy market. Batteries are very good for short-term storage. For longer duration, new solutions are required. Some of the most promising technologies currently being developed transform the electrical energy and store it as heat or compressed air. Heat exchangers are key components in this system. Alpha Laval has recently developed a new heat exchanger for this application called Pachinox Plus. Joining me today is my colleague, Benoit Sénéchal, who will tell us more. Benoit, can you please explain how Pachinox Plus heat exchanger help improving the overall efficiency of long duration energy storage systems? Hello, Emily, I'm here. For sure I can. But first, I would like to say a few words about what is the round trip efficiency. It is the ratio between the output and the input of an energy storage system. And as the price of electricity increases, so does every percentage point of the efficiency. Now, if you want to maximize the round trip efficiency, you need heat exchangers with outstanding performances and high capacity. And on top of that, low capex to keep the solution commercially viable. For all these reasons, the Pachinox Plus is the ideal solution. It combines in the same heat exchanger high performance corrugated channels and true counter current configuration, which leads to half the heat transfer area which would be required for the shell and tube solution. It makes a huge capex difference when you require tens and hundreds of thousands of square meters, and even more when the material requested is stainless steel. And since the Pachinox heat exchanger can reach up to 20,000 square meters in a single heat exchanger, it reduces the number of equipment and the installation cost. Thank you, Benoit. And if you would like to know more about the Pachinox Plus heat exchanger and the benefits they bring in the long duration energy storage, 
I invite you right now to contact your Alpha Laval representative. Thank you for watching and let's keep in touch. Together, let's start a partnership to save energy every day. Another key concept when we talk about green, clean energy is the hydrogen production, green hydrogen production specifically. And joining me now is Karin Forsberg to talk about exactly that. Hi, Karin, and thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Lily. Thanks for having me. Just to start off, can you just tell us how green hydrogen is produced? Yes, I'd love to. So uh, basically, green hydrogen is uh, produced by electrolysis of water. So what you need is electricity, green electricity and water. And the output is green hydrogen and a lot of waste heat. And waste heat that actually has to be cooled off. And so how can we contribute to Alpha Laval? Okay, firstly, actually by producing the demineralized water needed uh, as the feed for the electrolyzer. Water is actually the raw material for green hydrogen and uh, that is very often forgotten in the discussions, but it's huge amount consumed. And secondly, actually contributing with the cooler of uh, the electrolyzer, actually taking that waste heat and using that for the production of the high quality demineralized water. So it's a fantastic combination of producing the raw material and reusing the heat. Oh, fantastic. Next up, we have a short video to explain in more detail. In order to reach net zero scenario by 2050, we need to turn away fossil fuels. So we need something to replace it. And that's where hydrogen comes in. Green hydrogen is predicted to play a vital role in helping us reach our climate goals on time. So we need to make sure that our green hydrogen production are as efficient and sustainable as possible. Hi, my name is Luciana Mendes and I'm a business developer at Alpha Laval. And when we talk about green hydrogen, water is a key element. But as you know, water is a scarce resource and cannot be taken for granted. Already in 2030, we'll have at least 90 gigawatts of electrolyzer installed globally, which also means that we need at least half million cubic meter of water per water per day. You might be wondering if this is a lot or not. Well, this is equivalent of how much a city like Rome consumes per day. So when we talk about green hydrogen process, another key element is the heat. Between 20 to 40% of the electrolyzer capacity becomes waste heat. So how can we make use of this heat? So today, a typical electrolyzer works between 50 to 80 degrees, which is very low grade heat and difficult to use for other applications. So we were thinking, why not to use this waste heat to generate the right water quality? So by using Alpha Laval fresh water generator, we do two processes at the same time. We cool down the electrolyzer at the same time that we generate the right water quality. And compared to traditional desalination technology, we use much less chemicals, much less maintenance, and the electricity that goes through the process is used both for desalination and cool down. And by doing this, we increase the overall efficiency of the process. Our freshwater generator has the smallest footprint on the market, making it perfect to be used offshore or when fresh water is scarce. So if you choose Alpha Laval freshwater generator, you get a reliable and proven solution with more than half centering the market that will help all of us to create a more sustainable future. It's time to change to tomorrow's solutions today. That brings us to our third and final segment on circularity. With me now is Henrik Biastet. Hi, Henrik. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, just wanted to ask, could you tell us a little bit about how Alpha Loal Moati filters help contribute towards circularity? Of course. Currently, there are no technical solutions available to replace the engines where the Moati filters are fitted. So we're doing our best to reduce the environmental footprint uh, of existing technology until there is a second generation that can take over. By installing one uh, Alpha Laval Moati Lube Oil filter, 
we can eliminate the use of hundreds, if not up to a thousand, single-use cartridge filters. And also by doing that, you eliminate the waste stream of hazardous waste associated with those, with those cartridges. Well, that's incredible. So how can we support an engine maker who shares our drive for sustainable solutions? First of all, we customize a filter to the specific engine needs and the filtration required. And in addition to that, we can take care of the lifetime service of that filter through a rebuild or remanufacturing process that match the intervals of that specific en uh, engine. And by doing so, we maximize the, the, the lifetime of the filter and the reuse of components while minimizing the downtime, maintenance and consumption of parts. Fantastic. Let's find out more. Hello, I'm Maxim de Cazotte and I'm a product manager at Alpha Laval. Let me introduce you to the new Alpha Laval Moiti 180 range of self pinning filters for lubrication oil in large diesel engines. These filters are incredibly tough, efficient and extremely reliable. Exactly what you need for your critical production machinery and what you expect from Alpha Laval. Continuously self cleaning automatic filters are a state-of-the-art solution to protect your engine from contaminants and debris and extend the operating life of your lubrication oil. They keep your engine running smoothly, minimizing the risk of untimed downtime. By design, the maintenance schedule of your automatic filter is seamlessly coordinated with that of your engine, so your operation stops only when you plan it to. Our self-cleaning filters offer a sustainable alternative to traditional cartridge filters. Thanks to a system lifetime equal to that of the engine, raw material use and waste is minimized. Replacing cartridge filters with an Alfa Laval Moati self-cleaning filter also eliminates a vast hazardous waste stream, but it also takes out hours of dangerous and unnecessary maintenance work. There are many types of automatic filters, but this range really stands out. The filter media of an Alfa Laval Moati 180 is continuously backflushed. Unlike sequential systems, this prevents even temporary accumulation of pollutants. And thanks to our Atrium 2.0 technology, the pressure drop during operation is consistently kept to a minimum. So if you're looking for a filter that protects your engine, extends the life of your oil, and promotes efficient, sustainable and safe operation, this is the one you need. But it isn't just the filter itself that sets the Alfa Laval Moati range apart. Our service offer was created for circularity, which is good for the earth and for your wallet. I'm Ricard Johansson, I'm a Global Sales Manager at Alfa Laval, and I'd like to tell you about the unique service concept we offer for all Moati filters. It's simple. Alfa Laval takes full responsibility for the care, the maintenance and the flawless functioning of our filters throughout the entire lifetime of your engine. The Moati filter does not need a regular maintenance schedule. It can be remanufactured or rebuilt when your engine requires it. During the scheduled remanufacturing of your engine, you will simply replace the used filter from a pool of rebuilt filters designed to fit your engine. Our rebuild service will disassemble the used filter, clean and test the individual parts, and restore each component to perfect performance. The rebuild filter will then be returned to your stock, ready to be installed during your next schedule of maintenance. For applications with multiple machines and engines, Rather than rebuilding a single filter, we restore common components and filter elements. They can then be used to rebuild a wide range of self-cleaning filters. Our rebuild surface is focused on circularity, and we are dedicated to break the take-make-waste cycle. We don't just provide filters, we provide efficiency, sustainability and peace of mind. Back with me now is Karin, and joining us in the studio is Per Anders Enqvist. Hi, and thank you both for coming. Thank you. thank you. Just to start off with, Per Anders, as one of the leading experts on the subject, can you tell us why recycling is so important? Well, materials production and incineration globally is about 20 to 25 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so if we are going to have any chance of reaching net zero emissions, as, uh, as we're rightly targeting, uh, we have to do something about materials production and, and incineration. And, and, and if you start to look at that area, um, uh, recirculation and recycling is the obvious uh, first place to look, because most recycled materials are 80 or 90 percent more carbon efficient than primary materials. Um, so, so it is an essential area and, and uh, you can almost say that so far a lot of environmental work has focused on just the energy transition and that's a great place to start but we actually also need the materials transition. So how do you see the recycling industry developing going forward? 
I think they have a long but very exciting journey ahead of them. Um, so um, uh, if I make it a little bit black and white, uh, the recycling industry today is largely a sort of a collection and sorting industry. Uh, and where they need to go now is that they need to keep doing that, but they also need to sort of reprocess all of these materials so they can be uh, competitive against primary materials. And that's a quite big journey, so going from collection and sorting to also being a sort of a, let's call it, green infrastructure industry. Fantastic. And what of these areas is the most urgent, do you think, in the race to net zero? Well, by definition, if we're going to reach net zero, we need to address all of the big material flows. But, but if I maybe highlight a few of them, I think uh, plastics is a big uh, and obvious one. Um, I think that uh, steel, uh, to take that even further, uh, I think uh, food waste, uh, organics in general, um, batteries, um, and actually CO2 itself. Great. And Karin, how can we help here at Alfa Laval? I mean, we can help in, in several ways. And first and foremost, we would like to engage in partnerships with uh, our customers in order to innovate and develop the new processes that are needed for these material recycling flows. Um, and doing so, we are bringing our expertise in separation technologies and we combine that with the innovation ideas and visions of our customers in order to develop the new processes that are taking us further on the circularity journey. Thank you and thank you both for coming. Up next, we have a short video to go into more detail. We need to move from a take-make-waste world to circular thinking where nothing goes to waste. An entirely new industry is rapidly being built around recycling what had been seen as waste into valuable material that can be used in new processing. Thanks to our unique understanding of separation, Alpha Laval is leading the way in the development of circular production processes and industrial wastewater treatment. Alpha Laval can make a significant difference in many applications. Molecules once taken from Mother Nature can be kept in the circular system and will not go to waste. Each waste type is unique and needs specific processing methods involving several production steps that usually consume large amounts of water. But these processes can be helped thanks to Alpha Laval's range of separation technologies. Now let's share some examples. Consumer pressure to recycle polymers like rubber and plastics into renewable products is immense. The demand for plastic recycling is far greater than industry capacity. But there is hope. Alpha Laval disc stack separators can be used in both chemical recycling and pyrolysis processing to return plastics into production. Vehicle electrification drives the need for battery recycling since battery minerals are limited resources. This problem can be addressed with Alpha Laval decanter and evaporation equipment, which are used in processes that recover lithium and other battery minerals from scrapped batteries. For a long time, we've incinerated industrial mixed waste and minerals, but the hidden potential of waste such as fly ash, solid waste, and sewage sludge has recently been discovered. Mining industrial waste to get easy access to valuable minerals and fertilizer components has become a hot new industry and Alpha Laval evaporators, decanter centrifuges, and disc stack separators can play an important role in all of these processes. Almost every recycling plant uses large amounts of water, which is a common thread in the examples we have shared. This water becomes dirty and needs treatment. Alpha Laval's compact ZLD solutions can help. ZLD solutions are designed to recycle 95 to 98 percent of this water in an energy efficient manner. Sometimes valuable products can even be extracted from the wastewater. The recycling industry is rapidly growing and this is only the beginning. Everything we use needs to find its circular pathway. There is no other option. And we at Alpha Laval are here to help. Reach out to discuss your recycling challenge. On that hopeful note, we've sadly reached the end of our time. But before you go anywhere, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to everyone who helped make this event happen, and especially to our speakers who took the time to join us today. Now to take us out, Thomas is back with a few words of encouragement for the future. Thanks, Lily. And uh, 
I, I'm so happy with what we have seen today because I, I think there is a lot of talk about uh, the reaching the net zero by 2050 and it's uh, we're all aligned on that but the big question is the how. Uh, and we have got eight great examples of how uh, we can actually go into action mode today. Uh, and I think that that's what uh, really matters. Um, and I, I think also you don't have to be uh, sad that we are coming to the end here, Lily, because we are already by from tomorrow planning the, the third Net Zero launch event because uh, we have so much innovation happening, so it's much more coming. Uh, and then I would like to finish off with that uh, it's of course also about getting our own house in order and uh, already by next year we want to have a 50% reduction of our scope 1 and 2 uh, and we are well on track to deliver that and actually have uh, carbon neutrality by 2030. So we are working in parallel super hard on that and uh, on, a, on a good track for that. So with that my name is uh, Thomas, thanks for joining, I'm an energy hunter.